Hello everyone, uh, my name is Mohit, I work for PayPal and I have here Santosh with me, he works for MapR Technologies and today we are going to talk about uh, resource sharing beyond boundaries using Apache Myriad. So uh, before we get started, like I want to uh, know how many people have heard about Myriad before coming to this talk, like a show of hands. Nice. So and how many people use Yarn for work or fun? Okay. And how many people like want to use Yarn and Mesos together? Oh, nice. Okay. So uh, I was at uh, MesosCon last year and I gave a talk on what was precursor to uh, Myriad. And it's been uh, over like one year. And uh, the project has come a long way. Like we have about like 200 something stars on GitHub and uh, we got incubated under Apache uh, earlier this March. And a lot of uh, good work has been done over one year. And we will try to cover uh, most of that uh, during today's talk. And before we can get started, I would like to thank these uh, individuals uh, without whom Myriad would not have been where, where it is today. So uh, a brief round of applause for all of them. <laughs> so, uh, so we're going to talk about uh, what's up with data centers these days and then how Mesos and Yarn compare to each other. And why would you want to run both in your data centers? And how Myriad can help you with that. So uh, what's running on your data center? Uh, well, you have some tier one services. Um, these are like some business critical services. Uh, for example, your checkout service or maybe your login service or maybe the service which takes uh, the cab reservations. And these services are very critical for the business because when they go down, they like, really affect your business directly. And then you have some tier two services. Um, a good example of these can be your build system or let's say your QA environment. And uh, they are not as critical as tier one, but they're like really helpful for your development environment. So if, even if they go down, I think it's, uh, it's fine for a while. Uh, and then you might have some high priority uh, bad jobs running. Uh, a good example can be your billing batch, which runs every night or uh, some other data analytics jobs, uh, which should run when they are supposed to run. So still very high priority. And then you have some other best effort backfill jobs um, that can just run whenever somebody wants them to run, but they're not really very critical. And as we can see, these are a, a variety of workload, right? And then if you want to run these uh, on your data center, you want to have a resource manager with like following requirements. Uh, you want your resource manager to have a programming model that is based upon resources and not machines. And I think anyone who has seen uh, scripts and programs with hard-coded IP addresses uh, can feel the pain um, when, when, you, when you think about machines and not resources. Uh, and then you want your resource manager to support uh, custom resource types. Like for instance, uh, you might have some specialized hardware like GP, GPUs or you might want to take into consideration the power consumption of the CPUs while scheduling, et cetera. And uh, as we saw in the last slide, we have a variety of workload, right? Uh, so you might want to have customized scheduling algorithms for them. For example, you might have uh, um, some jobs which come in at a very high rate and then they run for a very short interval of time. So you want to like schedule them as fast as you can where uh, compared to, let's say, uh, a database that you want to run or a caching server uh, that you know that is going to run for a couple of weeks at least. Uh, so you, when you are scheduling that, you want to be uh, extra careful like on which machine you are scheduling that. Uh, you also want to have lightweight executors that can launch your task really, really quickly without adding uh, extra overhead. Um, and you want to run all of these uh, workloads uh, on any node in your data center, right? You don't want to create silos. So you want to also support multi-tenancy. And to support multi-tenancy, uh, you need to have uh, support for strong isolation. And uh, with, with that, you can like drive up your utilization. And you also want to support the entire big data ecosystem and Hadoop uh, together on the resource manager, right? And uh, you also don't want to leave behind your legacy uh, systems. Uh, so you want to also schedule them dynamically as the newer applications that you are building and a strong support for containers is also a must there. And lastly, you want to connect the big data to your non-Hadoop apps because uh, 
they cannot no longer live in like silos. Uh, for, for instance, you might have a front-end service generating a lot of data which goes through your analytics pipeline and then you want to like feed that back into your application so that they can use that. So the HDFS and the non-Hadoop apps like cannot live, like they have to like live together, right? So to like solve all these problems, we believe that um, Mesos um, is the right um, cluster manager. So this is MesosCon, and I'm pretty sure you all know what Mesos is by this time, but it's still, it's an open source project, Apache project. Uh, it's a cluster resource manager, scalable up to tens of thousands of nodes, and uh, it's fault tolerant. It doesn't have a single point of failure. It has really good support for multi-tenancy and resource isolation. And a lot of people who have been using Mesos for a while, they have reported uh, improved resource utilizations. Uh, and like, Mesos is more than yet another resource negotiator or YARN. Uh, I mean, it has great support for long-running services and real-time jobs, and it has like, native support for Docker. And the C group support in Mesos is there for years, and it's more complete than YARN. It can support CPU, memory, disk, network, and et cetera. And it's like, really easy to write a, a framework on top of Mesos. Like you can write a framework, like a toy framework, in at least 200 lines of code. And the core of Mesos is written in C++ uh, for performance, but you can write your frameworks and executors in any language that you choose. And like these are a few companies which have been using Mesos for a while, and I think there are many more now. And I was not able to put them all on, on this slide. So, so this is a brief overview of like Mesos uh, before we can go further. So. Uh, a Mesos cluster has a pack of masters which is led by one active uh, Mesos master elected through a Zookeeper quorum. And these Mesos masters are aware of all the resources that are in the cluster. And uh, there's another component called Mesos agent, like denoted by Mesos slave in the slide. I, I haven't corrected that yet. So these Mesos agents uh, basically report how much resources each node have in the cluster. Uh, back to the master, and they also assist uh, master to schedule any tasks uh, on the node. And then you have uh, the uh, frameworks, uh, which also have a scheduler in them. So uh, Mesos is a two-level scheduler, and uh, the Mesos masters can do resource scheduling, whereas the frameworks do the uh, task-level scheduling. Now let's compare that to uh, Yarn uh, with analogies, right? So. In Yarn, you have something called a resource manager, which is uh, very similar to a Mesos master. Uh, it is aware of all the resources in the cluster and can like schedule tasks. Uh, and then you have node manager, which is very similar to a Mesos agent. It reports back resources to the resource manager and assist resource manager to launch tasks. And then you also have something called an app master, which is uh, kind of similar to a Mesos framework, but not exactly. Uh, the key difference being the app master only expresses an intent to launch tasks, but doesn't really uh, do any scheduling. So all the scheduling is done by the resource manager itself. So it's sort of like a monolithic scheduler. And now the question is, why do you want to run both of these together in your data center? And I think the, uh, the short answer is uh, both of these, I don't see them as resource managers, I see them as ecosystems, and both of these are like really strong ecosystems. Mesos being a general purpose um, resource manager can schedule like, can help you schedule any type of workload. And it has like really good support for long running services, whereas Yarn still has a, a, um, a lot of big data related frameworks and I mean applications written on top of it. So. Uh, in a big enterprise, uh, you really want to use both of them together. But uh, what happens when you try to use them together? Well, uh, in this example, uh, on the left you have uh, the green nodes like which are managed by Mesos and only Mesos can schedule tasks on them. And then on the right you have uh, the blue nodes and only Yarn can like, run any task on them. And the uh, dashed rectangle that you can see in this slide, like the nodes that there is a inherent static partition in your data center. And uh, like honestly, like static partitioning like sucks because, well, your Hadoop teams might be fine with the isolated clusters, but uh, if you talk to your ops guys, they are not. Uh, they are like, really unhappy with that because if a node goes down in your, let's say, Hadoop cluster, it's like really, it's a very slow process to bring back and provision a new node and like add it back to the cluster. Also, like these, uh, 
the static partition also creates a resource silo, which reduces the elasticity, elasticity that you have in the data center. Uh, for instance, uh, let's say you were running your frontier on Mesos and there was a traffic spike and you want to offload some of the extra work uh, onto the Hadoop cluster by shutting down some jobs, which you cannot really do if there is a static partition. Or the vice versa, right? Like at night you have less traffic and you want to run like a lot, lot more Hadoop jobs. You cannot borrow resources from the Mesos cluster. So like that is bad. And you also, like we talked about it earlier, you also want to run Hadoop on the same infrastructure as, the, your, as your tier one services without really interrupting them. And to do that, you also want to support like multi-tenancy and resource isolation. And uh, ideally we want to go to a model where both Mesos and Yarn can coexist happily in the data center and you don't really distinguish between the nodes in your cluster. So Mesos and Yarn can schedule their tasks on any node in the data center. So in this example, you, have, you can see that there are certain nodes where the green task, which is the Mesos task, and the blue box, which denotes a Yarn task, are running together. Um, and uh, this gives you the elasticity and the flexibility to like, schedule any type of workload on your data center. And now I will hand it over to Santosh, who is going to talk more about Myriad and how Myriad can help you achieve that. So take it away, Santosh. Thanks, Mohit, and uh, thanks everyone for uh, coming for this talk. Um, so, uh, so let's actually go further to see uh, how Myriad can help in solving the static partitioning problem. So just a quick uh, overview about uh, Myriad. Um, Myriad is a full-fledged uh, framework for uh, running YARN on top of Mesos. So Mesos manages the whole data center and uh, uh, Myriad tries to run YARN as a framework on top of Mesos. And Myriad tries to negotiate resources uh, between YARN and Mesos. Um, and in this talk, we are going to actually further look at uh, the resource sharing models. Uh, we have a couple of resource sharing models which uh, we feel uh, will be useful for most of the admins uh, for their uh, you know, scheduling needs in a data center. So let's uh, look at the resource sharing models. Um, so we first start with a simple um, you know, Mesos managed uh, cluster. In this example, uh, we have a Mesos master running and uh, we have three Mesos uh, slaves or the Mesos agents running. And uh, since Yarn works closely with uh, HDFS, we assume that HDFS is uh, present in the cluster and is accessible for uh, Yarn to run you know, any jobs that would interact with uh, HDFS, for example, a MapReduce job. Um, and you might be aware that there is also an HDFS framework for Mesos. Uh, so as long as, I mean, as far as Myriad is concerned, it doesn't matter whether you use a HDFS framework for Mesos or otherwise, but the essential need is that HDFS be present in the, in the cluster. So we start with this cluster and uh, we launch uh, the resource manager, which is the master for uh, Yarn. And uh, you can actually launch the resource manager uh, you know, by, by hand, or you can actually launch it using uh, Marathon, which is a meta framework for running any arbitrary process. Um, in this example, uh, the dotted line, I'm not sure if you can see it, but um, so the dotted line on the top, uh, uh, you know, resembles the Mesos container within which the resource manager is being launched. So, um, and uh, the good thing is uh, that Myriad can actually plug in into the resource manager process itself. Uh, there is a YARN configuration for uh, specifying what type of uh, scheduler that the resource manager should use. There are like three types of schedulers, like fair scheduler, capacity scheduler, and uh, FIFO scheduler. And uh, what Myriad essentially does is it uh, extends these uh, scheduler classes so that the scheduler uh, functionality itself is still available, but uh, Myriad can initialize itself by extending the scheduler. So this is a very simple uh, configuration that we have used to run Myriad inside the resource manager. And we will see further why we did that, uh, why Myriad should run inside the resource manager. So Myriad itself has multiple components that are uh, part of uh, the code that is running inside the resource manager. Uh, the most important part uh, is the Mesos scheduler. Um, so remember like Mesos is a two level scheduler and uh, the framework gets an opportunity to choose uh, what to do with the resource offers. So um, 
So we need a Mesos scheduler uh, running as part of this framework too. And uh, we have a REST interface uh, for the admins to interact with the system. And uh, you know, like uh, there are a bunch of other classes uh, that uh, Myriad itself uses to accomplish its functionality. So let's go back and uh, look at uh, the process. Uh, so once the resource manager is launched, um, Myriad registers itself as a framework with uh, Mesos master. And from this point on, anything that happens in the YARN cluster happens uh, by taking resources from Mesos. So the next step uh, that an admin would want to do is to interact with Myriad and uh, you know, see what he can do with it. So we have uh, uh, a REST interface using which the admin can interact. And uh, the most important APIs are uh, FlexUp, FlexDown, uh, Config, and uh, State. Um, so FlexUp basically helps the admin to scale up the YARN cluster. So the admin can actually try to launch multiple node managers using this API. And FlexDown is uh, an API to actually bring down the YARN cluster to a you know, limited number of nodes or node managers. Uh, config is uh, basically an API to query the current uh, configuration uh, that's used by Myriad. And state is an API to query the current state, like you know, how many node managers were running, how many were, the, were in staging, and how many are, um, uh, you know, are killed or you know, they died abruptly. So let's look at uh, the uh, API for launching a node manager. Um, the API looks something like this. So we have defined an abstraction called profile. Uh, profile is basically an abstraction for the resources that the node manager has to advertise to the resource manager once, it's, once it uh, registers itself with the resource manager. Remember in the YARN cluster, resource manager performs all the scheduling and the node manager uh, is an agent that advertises the capacities that are available remotely on a node. And based on the free capacity available on the node manager, the resource manager will perform the scheduling. So medium profile might mean something like, you know, like 20 gig of RAM and maybe like 10 CPUs. So when the node manager tells resource manager it has, you know, this set of resources available, um, you know, resource manager can actually schedule some YARN containers for that node manager. So in this example, we are trying to actually launch uh, one node manager uh, with the medium profile. So when that request goes to Myriad, Myriad basically queues it inside its memory and it waits for an um, offer from uh, Mesos that can actually match the capacity that uh, you know, we want to launch the node manager with. So the offer should be big enough to launch the node manager process itself and uh, capacity for uh, the future YARN containers. Um, so we wait until uh, uh, that offer is available. And if it's not available, that means there are other Mesos frameworks that are of higher priority than YARN that are running in the cluster. And those frameworks are perhaps receiving the Mesos offers instead of uh, Myriad itself. But just in case like we receive an offer that matches uh, these specifications, we just go ahead and launch a node manager. And uh, remember, like in this picture, we see that there is a custom executor that is uh, running as part of uh, as actually like it's, we launch a custom executor that in turn launches the node manager. And this is needed because uh, node manager itself requires some configuration, uh, YARN specific configuration. For example, like how do you discover the resource manager? And how do you configure the C groups hierarchy for uh, YARN itself? So these are actually pre-configured using uh, executor and um, we launch the node manager uh, with the right configuration. And uh, if you can see in the picture, uh, we reserve some um, capacity for future YARN containers. And this might sound like uh, Myriad is wasting resources here because you know, there are no containers yet, but still we are actually holding on to resources. Uh, but if you look at it, we started with a statically partitioned cluster. And Mesos was running separately and YARN was running separately. And uh, with something as simple as this, we have started making progress into bringing these two together. And with this one, like yes, maybe there are some wasted resources right now, but you have an ability to, um, you know, for the admin to actually, you know, kill the node managers in case uh, the resources are needed for other Mesos frameworks. 
Um, or actually, if you use this wisely, you can uh, make sure that uh, your Hadoop jobs that were running separately in a different cluster um, that had high needs of meeting some SLS, they can use these uh, reserve resources and make sure that you know, those uh, Hadoop jobs still meet the SLS. And another advantage of this model is that uh, when you are launching uh, jobs, you have some headroom available for running the application masters right away. And further uh, requests can be like, uh, you know, further containers can be launched later on if you have more capacity available in the cluster. So let's look at another model of resource sharing that uh, Myriad offers. Um, so we have a special profile called Zero Profile. And uh, what it does is it launches a node manager with uh, zero capacity. That means when the node manager registers itself with the resource manager, it, it just tells that I do not have any capacity. So the resource manager can't straight away allocate any containers to this uh, node manager. Um, but why is this useful? I mean, uh, you have a node manager that says, I don't have any resources, and resource manager can't do anything with it straight away. But if you look at, uh, let's, let's look at an example, like, uh, you know, let's say that uh, you have some uh, uh, apps submitted to Yarn. The app submissions goes to the, go to the resource manager, and the resource manager waits for heartbeats from node managers to perform the scheduling. So when the medium uh, profile node manager heartbeats to the resource manager, it can actually schedule some containers to it, um, because there are pre-reserved uh, capacity available on the node manager. But uh, there can't be any uh, containers that can be allocated to the zero profile node manager. But imagine like if uh, the node manager that's, uh, you know, the zero profile node manager, uh, the slave on which it's running, if that slave node has uh, capacity available, then Mesos can actually offer that to Myriad. And what Myriad does is uh, it uses those resource offers and uh, it dynamically resizes the node manager capacity. So if you have, like you started with a zero, uh, capacity node manager, but uh, let's say Myriad gives in, or actually Mesos gives in an offer for, you know, five, five gig and, you know, two CPUs, then you can actually go ahead and run a few containers using those resources. So once you receive this offer, um, Myriad can actually go ahead and launch the containers for uh, Yarn. And, uh, yeah, and the, uh, if, if, if Myriad doesn't receive any offers, obviously there are no containers that can be launched. And as the containers finish, uh, the medium profile node manager still holds on to the resources uh, that uh, it uh, previously uh, obtained from Mesos. Whereas the zero profile node manager actually starts giving back the resources back to Mesos. And these resources are now available for other frameworks or back to Myriad again, like if there are no other frameworks that are running in the cluster. So when, the, when Yarn is not running anything, we go back to where we started. Basically, like, we have a node manager with the medium profile still holding on to some resources. And the zero profile node manager gives back everything. So these two models, I think, are useful for admins to be you know, flexible to schedule uh, the number of node managers with uh, you know, different profile levels and use the node managers with zero profile uh, you know, wisely. So it ha helps to actually meet the uh, SLA needs for high profile or high um, priority Hadoop jobs. And, uh, you know, any surplus capacity that is available in the cluster can be used to backfill the, you know, low priority Hadoop jobs. So let's uh, quickly do a demo of uh, what I have just uh, described. So I just fired up a MapReduce job. Let me actually show you the UI for, uh, for the cluster first. So I have a four node cluster uh, that has a Mesos master and three Mesos slaves. And I used a Marathon to launch a resource manager just like I described in the slides. Um, 
And this is the UI for Myriad. Um, and if you look at the FlexUp options, like it uh, lists the, uh, the different profiles available in the system. And the admin can actually go ahead and, uh, uh, you know, like he can define custom profiles in the Myriad configuration and they will seamlessly be shown on the UI. So the zero profile will have zero CPU and memory and small profile has one CPU and 1100 gig of RAM, 1100 megabytes of RAM. Um, so we have like all of these options and uh, uh, you can specify the number of instances that you want to flex up and then perform the flex up. And the tasks tab shows the active tasks that are running and the, you know, there are other options like pending tasks and staging and killable tasks. So currently I have uh, launched a, a node manager with a medium profile and a node manager with a zero profile. And uh, if you look at the Mesos UI, it actually shows uh, three tasks that are active. One is the task for the resource manager itself. This was launched using uh, Marathon. And uh, these two are the tasks that were launched using Myriad. And one of them is the medium size profile and the other one is the zero size, zero size profile. Um, and this is the UI for uh, Yarn, and we see that uh, there are two, two node managers that registered with uh, the resource manager. And uh, one of them is uh, having uh, non-zero capacity, five gig of RAM and two uh, CPU cores. And the second one has registered with uh, zero amounts of uh, CPU and memory. So let's look at uh, what happens when you submit a job. So I have a small uh, Terrasort job uh, with, uh, I think, like 10 mappers and two red users. And so the first container went on to the medium profile node manager. That's the app master. And then once the app master is up, we start seeing that there are other containers that are getting launched. And if you look at the Mesos, uh, UI, we see that uh, for every container that is launched on the zero profile node manager, we are actually launching a corresponding Mesos task. So this is actually not a physically running Mesos task, but it's a placeholder for running the YARN container, the corresponding YARN container. So when uh, all the containers are finished, we should see that uh, there are no more Mesos tasks that are running in the cluster. Yeah, so we can look at the YARN UI to see what was the capacity of the zero profile node manager. So we noticed that we received some offers from Mesos which we used to expand the capacity of the zero profile node manager. So it's currently at uh, three gig of memory and one CPU. And uh, I think it looks like the job is done and uh, basically like we come back to where we started. That is the, the medium profile stays at you know, what was the, whatever, what, what was the originally, um, uh, original capacity of the node manager and the zero profile goes back to the, you know, zero gig of RAM and uh, zero CPUs. So let's uh, go back to the slides. Um, so basically we think that uh, this models of resource sharing actually helps both Mesos and uh, Hadoop. And uh, the, the first advantage that we see is that uh, Yarn, if it can run on top of uh, Mesos, it actually, because of its powerful ecosystem around it, it can actually help you to run a lot of these uh, Hadoop related applications on top of Mesos. And uh, as, uh, as we have seen earlier, like, uh, you know, if there are tier one services that are running in your Mesos cluster, then those tier one services can actually utilize the Hadoop uh, resources. Earlier in the, in the, in the earlier model, uh, before Myriad, basically you had two clusters that were separate and there was no resource sharing between both of them. So if there, are, there is a 100 node Mesos cluster and a 100 node Yarn or Hadoop cluster, and you run out of capacity in your Mesos cluster, there is no way to actually borrow resources from Hadoop. But let's say you actually have a 200 node Mesos cluster and you have Yarn running on top of it. And you have this flexibility to actually grow Yarn to a 100 node cluster within a Mesos cluster 
or actually shrink it back to a 50 node Mesos or Yarn cluster and utilize the rest of the nodes for uh, running your tier one services. And it also helps you to do the other way around. Basically the unused resource capacity can be in the Mesos cluster can be used for uh, Hadoop itself. So as an IT admin, like uh, it's actually a pretty good uh, deal for your uh, uh, infrastructure because you suddenly have a way to utilize your resources in the optimal way possible. And the cool thing about this is like you do not actually require any code changes on the Mesos side. It just works seamlessly. On the other way, like uh, it also helps uh, improve the Hadoop side of things. Uh, firstly, like you have elastic scaling. Earlier, you started with a cluster and unless you add more machines to it and provision more node managers into it, you do not have the ability to grow the yarn cluster. But with Myriad, actually, you can grow the yarn cluster to, to the fullest extent possible. Like if you have a 200 node Mesos cluster, you can pretty much get a 200 node yarn cluster. And it's a fault tolerant. Like Myriad monitors whether the node managers are running healthily or not. And if uh, the admin says he wanted, you know, four node managers with medium profile, then Myriad monitors constantly that all the four instances are up and running. And if any of them die um, due to hardware failure, then you, Myriad automatically starts them on another Mesos slave node. And uh, uh, we talked about this, like uh, there is a pretty good uh, resource utilization and sharing between the frameworks. Um, and the high SLA Hadoop jobs are still not unaffected, are still unaffected because uh, you always can define the size of the node managers to be flexible enough to suit your SLA needs. And as an IT admin, I think uh, it's a powerful API for, uh, for you to actually figure out like how many node managers you want and uh, you know, at what times you want. For example, during the daytime you have tier one services and during the nighttime you want to be able to meet the SLA needs of your Hadoop job. So you can use the API to be, you know, to, to suit your needs. And it, re it doesn't require any code changes on the YARN side or any of the other projects that are dependent on YARN. So it's a, it's a pretty good deal. Here are some of the other important features that uh, the media team is uh, working on. Um, so we talked about the uh, ability to launch resource manager using Marathon. And in fact, actually, you can uh, discover a Marathon, or sorry, you can discover resource manager using Mesos DNS. Um, so the node managers can always, uh, you know, use the Mesos DNS hostname and connect to the active uh, resource manager. The resource manager dies, Marathon being a meta framework, it can actually detect the failure and relaunch the resource manager on another node. And the node manager seamlessly connect back to that node. Um, and uh, so one of the other things that uh, we recently worked on was uh, the ability to distribute the Hadoop binaries. So Mesos slave can actually remotely fetch the binaries that are needed to launch the executor and the node manager. Uh, and media provides a configuration for the location of the, of the binaries. And as we have seen in the demo, like we have a web interface and uh, we're trying to actually expand on uh, what you can see on the web interface. We, are, we also want to try to make Myriad production ready for folks to try to use it in the, their production systems. So the important thing uh, to achieve that goal is uh, doing the high, avail high availability of uh, the scheduler. So we are actively working on that one. And we also want to be able to launch any of the YARN related processes using Myriad itself. So today we have the ability to launch node managers, but we are working on uh, the ability to launch other processes like job history server and the timeline server in the future using Myriad itself. And we would like to hear from you like what you would like to see in, uh, in you know, us to work on. And uh, we are happy to actually listen to your uh, feedback and uh, incorporate that as we go along making progress on the project. So there are some, are some of the links for learning more about Myriad. Uh, we are currently on the GitHub at github.com slash meso slash Myriad. And we have a pretty active community uh, of developers uh, on dev at myriad.incubator.apache.org. And uh, we have uh, uh, hangout sessions every couple of weeks. And if you are interested to learn more about where Myriad is going and what features we are working on, please feel free to join the Hangout. Um, 
And we have a Myriad Jira available. Um, and uh, the incubator proposal and the status page are also available for you to you know, keep you updated about Myriad. That's all we have, and uh, we are happy to take any questions. How does the scaling work with HDFS decommission? Yeah. Um, I didn't quite understand the question. Right. I see. So the point is, uh, so YARN might be there on a few nodes, and HDFS might be there on several nodes. And you can be ha adding more HDFS nodes. And how would, uh, how does it actually work together, right? So, um, so ideally, what you would want to do is you want to be able to run node managers on exactly the same set of nodes where the uh, HDFS data nodes are. That's because uh, node manager can utilize the data locality better. But uh, that may not be the case always. Like even today, like you can have the cases where node managers are not actually running on the data nodes. But as long as Hadoop or HDFS is accessible from YARN, you would be able to, resource manager would be able to schedule uh, containers on the node managers. So in cases where HDFS is uh, running exactly on the same nodes, you have better performance. But in other cases, you have less performance. But the goal is to actually, uh, you know, strike a balance between better resource utilization and better performance. So, yeah. So I think, uh, like, if you actually launch the node managers on exactly the same set of nodes where your data nodes are, um, that's going to give you the maximum performance for your uh, Hadoop jobs. Does that answer your question? So I think currently what is missing in the Myriad API is the ability to say, hey, I, don't, I want to launch these set of node managers on these specific no hosts. And the, you know, if you have an API like that, I think it's going to give you an ability to launch the node managers exactly on the same set of nodes where you have the data nodes running. Uh, today it's a little more arbitrary, like it can launch anywhere. Uh, but we have an active Jira, and we are working on that one. Sure, go ahead. So I think the question is, uh, when does the zero profile uh, node manager gives back the resources? So I think as soon as the container finish running, I think it just releases the resources back. So what we do is, uh, when we receive the Mesos offer, we expand the node manager. Actually, we use the offer to uh, project to resource manager that the node manager suddenly has more capacity available. And that lets the resource manager to schedule YARN containers. And, but you have to also tell Mesos that we are actually taking this offer and you know, doing something with that offer, right? So what we do is we'll actually launch something called placeholder tasks corresponding to each YARN container. And those placeholder tasks basically live as long as the corresponding container lives. So once the YARN container finishes, we, we kind of know that, okay, so that container finished, so we relinquish the resources back to Mesos by saying that, okay, so the status of that placeholder task is now complete. So the question is, uh, why not use zero profile always? Um, it's because, uh, you know, like different admins have different needs and, you know, perhaps one use case is that um, you have some, you want to reserve some capacity for your YARN cluster itself because you have high SLA jobs. Like you usually you have like at least 20% of your Hadoop jobs are very, very important jobs. And you want to be able to launch them 
even in case when uh, you know there are tier one services that are running in your cluster. So that's one reason why you might want uh, you know a medium profile or a high profile uh, set of uh, node managers. But you are free. You know if if you do not have that kind of need, like for example, you are running a QA cluster within a Mesos cluster where everything is so dynamic and there are no uh, no needs to actually reserve uh, capacity for your YARN cluster, then you can actually use zero profile always. So the question is, uh, so Media doesn't have the ability for uh, doing the data locality yet. Um, and uh, you know, she was asking, uh, uh, why can't Media take the offer and figure out whether that offer is good to be accepted with respect to data locality? Uh, the, well, we, we could do that, but basically the idea is that if you have something like the zero profile node managers, then they are actually very tiny. They do not consume a lot of resources. And you have the node manager as one of the uh, entry points for resource manager to schedule YARN containers. And uh, so let's say you have a, a cluster that's running like 20 data nodes. You can pretty much launch 20 node managers of zero profile there so that you can ha you have the ability to utilize the data locality. So that's one way to do that. Um, but I think the better way is, uh, as I was uh, telling him, um, is to allow the admin to figure out like where exactly he wants to launch the node managers. Um, that way, like you can always be sure that the node managers that you want to launch always land on the exactly same nodes where the data nodes are running. So it is slightly harder because. Uh, the data locality decision actually happens when the resource manager performs the scheduling. So when the container request comes in, the container request has preference about like where exactly the containers uh, should be allocated. And uh, Myriad can try to look into that, but I think that's further down the line. I mean, like we can, we want to start with something simple and something less disruptive. And you know, if that doesn't work out, then we want to improve things. No, I think, uh, so the question was like, FlexDown doesn't seem to work sometimes, and uh, it's a bug. I mean, it, it is supposed to be working, and uh, we got to see like why it's not working. Uh, uh, so I don't know. I don't know the current answer for that. I mean, uh, but we, we are pretty actively working on it. I mean, I'm sure like it should be fixed easily. Sure. Sure. Sorry, I didn't catch the question actually. So the question was, uh, what is the concrete use case for using uh, YARN and uh, Mesos together? Um, I think the origins were like, uh, you know, I think one clear use case is uh, when you're doing, uh, uh, you know, any web 2.0 company that has, you know, huge user-facing service, like for example, Twitter, uh, 
Uh, it has, uh, like the capacity planning for tier one services happens for peak traffic. So during, when something is trending on Twitter, probably like, uh, you know, your uh, Mesos cluster is highly utilized. And uh, during other times it is less utilized. So, you know, it's, it's, when it is less utilized, you cannot do anything about it because, you know, it is siloed from the Hadoop cluster. But if you have an ability to launch Yarn jobs on top of Mesos, then you would be able to utilize that cluster better. So I think that's one of the motivations. I think that's the last question. I think we are out of time. I think we are out of time, sorry. We'll, we'll talk to you. Thank you. Thank you.